Welcome to Front Office, where athlete entrepreneurs take their talents from the field to the boardroom. Presented by UBS. Today, we're in Los Angeles, California, where two startup companies will face off to secure an investment from a former NBA veteran with a deep investment background. The entrepreneurs will not be alone out there. They'll have mentorship and guidance from someone who knows a thing or two about professional athletes. I'm Wale Ogunleya, head of sports and entertainment at UBS. After playing 11 years in the NFL, I've seen firsthand how professional athletes can use their success to build wealth away from their sport and help make a positive impact in the process. Today, we'll be joined by NBA star Thaddeus Young. Thad is a longtime NBA veteran, but is widely known for his business acumen off the court, where he's built an impressive investment portfolio, including early positions in some of the biggest and best companies in the world. Thad is always ahead of the curve. So let's see how he evaluates his investment opportunities in a front office boardroom. Today we're headed to UBS to check out a couple of investments, uh, two, two really great companies. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a special. Things that I normally look for when I'm checking out an investment pitch, one is uh, leaders on the, on the cap table, so who's leading the round. Uh, two is uh, very, very strong strategic advisors. Um, you know, if, in whatever fields that, that, they're, that the product is in or the software is in. And then uh, strong founders. Like, you know, you gotta have a strong founder, one that can build out a team, uh, one that's, you know, not afraid to uh, take constructive criticism. And uh, not only do I want strong founders, but a sh strong team members. You know, um, it's the same thing with basketball. You know, you gotta have a strong team. You gotta strong, have strong teammates in order to win basketball games. It's the same way with winning in, in, uh, in business world. Today I have my cousin and business manager and fund manager, Tara Hernandez. Uh, we, we like to call her with our group, the One Woman Wrecking Crew. Uh, she's very strong in several different markets from you know, culture to music to healthcare on down the line. But her specialties is real estate and she has an MIT degree as well. So she's, like I said, a one woman wrecking crew by herself. Thad has dominated on the court throughout his 14 year NBA career. Although an accomplished athlete, he's known off the court for his business acumen and red hot investment track record. He's always looking for the next big opportunity. So today, He's locked in and ready to partner with a great company. Hey, Thaddeus, my guy, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, man, welcome to UBS. Yes, Exciting day in front of us. Towers inside, waiting in the boardroom. Let's go check her out. Yes, sir. Let's head to the boardroom. Come on. Hey, what's hey, up? what's happening? How are you doing? I'm great, ready to get some GSD today? Oh yeah, what's going on? What we got today? Well, uh, we have two up today. The first one will be a company called Cubo. Okay. So they're making a ready in a minute, hot or cold natural ingredient beverage maker. They say they want to be sort of the Keurig for shakes, smoothies, and soups. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and then we have a real estate play called House Stay. And they want to be the e-commerce leasing platform for long-term housing. So a little bit of an extended Airbnb type platform. So I'm really interested with our real estate experience to see a little bit about um, what they're willing to pitch. Yeah, that's right up your alley. Yes. All right, let's get started. Bring the first one in. First, we have an innovative company that's ready to reshape the booming smoothie industry. I'm Grishka and I'm the CEO of Kubo. Kubo was created in 2016 and we're just launching to market now. So Nicholas, actually our founder, got the idea for Kubo. He has a wife and three kids, and every morning his kids were late to go to school. And as an engineer, he was like, why not building a um, machine that could do that, that for him? And that's how Kubo was born today. The biggest challenge for Kubo? Hmm. Right now, I would say it's delivering and logistics. We're a small team because we're still in startup mode and we need money to be able to finally, you know, deliver and uh, make our investors make 
some good money out of it. The mission for us at Kubo is to democratize healthy food and in a convenient way to the most people possible. Grishka and his team at Kubo are working on an innovative approach to the single service beverage industry. With a very interesting monetization model, they're primed to become a leader in the space. But with supply chain and global distribution needs, do they truly have the infrastructure to scale? He'll need to be on point and clear to convince Thad that Kubo is a winning investment. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to UBS. You excited about your pitch? Very excited. Let's head into the bullpen and talk about your business. OK. Let's go. Really excited to have you here today. Before you head into your pitch, I want to go over a few things. First, talk about strength and sustainability. You go above and beyond with your sustainability efforts. Make sure you lean into this when saying what makes Cubo better. Next, discuss healthy highlights. Show how your product goes from ice to nice and what this means in terms of the health benefits. Make sure you talk about B2B versus B2C. There are two different sets of customers you're trying to reach. How is your business model different for each one? And finally, time is money. Talk about your personal experiences that led to the creation of this machine and how it helps everyone save time in the morning. Now, with all that, I think you're ready to do this. Yep, thank you, let's do it. Let's go ahead. I'll be out here when you get out. Thank you. Good luck. We're very excited today to pitch Thaddeus Young because one of Kubo's targets and verticals are gyms and the sports industry in general. So if he loves our product, I'm sure we could get amazing exposure on top of his investment. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Doing fine. We're excited to have you here today. We, thank you. We definitely want to see what you got there. Tell us, a little, tell us a little bit about your business and who you are. Hi, I'm Grishka, the CEO of Kubo. And our clients call us the Keurig of everything else. Juices, smoothie, lattes, hot and cold soups, anything you can think of, Kubo can make it. Our chef has developed recipes with only fruits inside, no added sugar, no food dyes, no preservatives. And the steps are very simple. You put that Kubo pod inside of the machine, you press start, you wait about one minute, and then you get your smoothie ready. And the best part is that, that our machine is self-cleaning, so no cleaning required whatsoever. So why Kubo and why is it a great investment? Uh, first, unlike many startups, Kubo is less risky. Why? Because the founding team has already invested $2.5 million into that machine over six years of research and development. And we have 17 patents protecting our technology. We already have market acceptance and recognition as we're trying many different verticals. So we've just launched to market a couple months ago and are exploring verticals such as gyms and sports center, and really would love your help on that for sure. Uh, hotels, restaurant, coffee places, co-working spaces, corporate offices, airport lounges, you name it. Uh, we also have a lot of demand inquiries from individuals who want a Kubo machine in their house. Right now, this will be a step two. We're only focusing on businesses. Why? Because there is just more use of the machine. A family will make a few smoothies a month. A business can make up to 50 to 100 smoothies a day. Our business model is very straightforward. Two strategies here. We give the Kubo machine for free to businesses in exchange of a commitment of 300 pods bought from us. We sell our pods depending on volume from $2.49 to $2.99. And when we reach the desired volumes, our gross margin will be 60%. The machine will be sold to individuals because they won't use it as much as businesses. It will be sold for a retail price of $499. So the technology behind Kubo. So on top of the 17 patents I mentioned earlier, we made sure that every capsule, every pod has a chip. Why that chip? 
two reasons. The first reason is that it's like a car key. If you put a Kubo pod into the Kubo machine and it doesn't recognize that RFID technology and encrypted information, it won't start. This avoids any counterfeit pod, even if we already have 17 patents. Second reason why we have a chip is because we can gather big data and preferences about our clients. Down the road, we will be able to set up automatic reorders for our clients, for instance. Right now, the machine stores all of the data, has an antenna inside, and we can just, without any Wi-Fi, when scanning the QR code display on the screen, extract all the data of all the pods that have been consumed and which one they are. One last thing I wanted to mention is that our break-even for the whole company is fairly low. 500 machines installed is our break-even. I was a little nervous at the beginning, but then I think I was able to convey the idea I really wanted to show um, Thaddeus and his business manager. I think they will really see Kubo's value when they try one of our beverages. All right, do you guys have any questions? Well, I got a lot of questions, but I think we need to try some product first. Let's try the carrot tear. It's basically a booster juice with carrot, orange juice, ginger, and cayenne pepper for the kick. So, as I explained earlier, this is a Kubo pod. Very simple. You insert the pod in the machine. You close the door. The machine is reading the pod. It recognizes that it's the booster juice because they communicate with that chip. You click on start and then wait around one minute. So what the, is the machine doing right now? Pushing the content of the pod into the chamber, injecting some water into the chamber. There is a blender inside of the machine right now. It will blend the drink for about one minute and then the drink will be ready right away. It's ready. Yep. And then the machine will self-clean. So what you're hearing right now is the self-cleaning. Oh. Okay. There you go. That one. All right. Cheers. Nice and frothy. Got a little kick to it. Taste that Kanye, yeah, Kanye and kick. Definitely love the idea. Love the fact that, you know, uh, you guys have something that nobody else is doing right now. It's a one of a kind product, obviously. And, you know, but there's always a million questions, you of know, course. and with having these questions, you know, comes uh, us having to make some decisions. So my first question, can I call you G? Of course. All right, perfect. It's more perfect. simple. Perfect. <laughs> my guy G. <laughs> So my first question is, uh, what's this, what's this, I, I keep, sorry, I keep looking at this plate that you have in front of you. What's this plate that you have in front of you? Oh, so basically, uh, this is an award we just got. So we did a trade show at the LA Convention Center called Western Food Service and Hospitality Expo. And we won best product of the whole show over thousands of products. <laughs> nice, nice. Up next, Thaddeus and his team probe Kubo on the ins and outs of the company. Who is your B to C customer? What's the, the five year plan? What's your path to profitability in terms of time? So far, Kubo has sold Thaddeus on the flavor of his product, but will his pitch stand the test of the investors' questions? First of all, I understand that you said your B to B model um, or hotels and several verticals, which I think are great opportunities. Is there a particular niche within that uh, series of industry verticals is one. And also for the $4.99 price point, who is your B2C customer? Right now for the different B2B verticals, like the one we're seeing the most traction are gas stations because there is so much foot traffic. So for the B2C strategy, we're targeting household with $75,000 of yearly income and above. Another really important question that also aligns with the current labor markets is supply chain log logistics. Where are you manufacturing? What's the turnaround time on ordering a product? 
And have you experienced any potential supply chain delays? Great questions, actually. So right now we're manufacturing our Kubo machines in China with our manufacturing partner. Uh, and our pods are manufactured locally here in Los Angeles. The main resource to be that, that Kubo needs to build a machine is those chipsets. Mm -hmm. And we also have connection to Brazil as well to get those chipsets from Brazil where we can find them thanks to our co-founders relationships there and ship them, ship them to our manufacturing partner in China. Uh, and down the road, if we reach the volumes we want, we are not opposed as also bringing um, the manufacturing of those machines more locally. Uh, my next question is, uh, what's the, the five-year plan plus the uh, exit strategy? So within five years, we want to have 7,000 machines placed in businesses. And then we will start to go to the B2C, to individual customers. We think that within five years, when those 7,000 machines are placed in businesses, the MOIC, the multiple over-invested capital, can reach 25x, when uh, regular startups uh, have a 10x multiple. That's aggressive, yeah. but we like it. How many actual customers do you have right now? Right now, we have around 15 customers. Okay. And we're actually, we actually have a pipeline with uh, another 10 for like the next couple of weeks. Obviously, like we know blenders, they make lots of noise. Uh, this one uh, has a, a bit of a kind of loud sound. Um, is there any way to get the sound down or have, have you guys talked about uh, getting the sound down? I mean, it's not a huge problem. Yeah, but noise dampening yeah. strategy, yes. So yeah, for sure, there is a blender inside, as mm -hmm. we said at the beginning. So it makes a little noise for sure. Mm -hmm. But if you compare it to a blender, it will make less noise. And yes, like I'm, we are working on a second version for the future and trying to see where we could improve that to make it more soundproof. How much does it cost to manufacture your, you guys' machines? With high volumes, around 250 bucks. And then same thing for the pods. Uh, we have, like, we're having like a 60% 60 60 margin on these pods. All right, what's your path to profitability in terms of time? How long and what's the use of funds that you would, um, that are you seeking from investors? So. Kubo will reach break even when 500 machines are placed. And the use of proceeds are simple. Like we will focus a lot of our resources into the sales team to ramp up uh, our sales for sure. So today we're asking for $500,000 for 4% of Kubo at a $12.5 million valuation. How did you determine the valuation? Um, with future revenues and um, discounted cash flow at the 8% uh, discount. Okay. Well, we we usually have uh, one more question that we always ask, and that's, this is like our team question. And that's what keeps you up at night? Besides money. I'm French, my first value is not money. <laughs> <laughs> so what keeps me up at night right now is that we have a lot of demand from a lot of market. Like I received the call uh, last week from a big hotel in Columbus, Ohio. We can service them. We don't have the team for that. And that's what's keeping me up at night. I would love to have more money so we could invest in the expanding and scaling our team. All right, G, thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, you gave us a lot to think about and you know we just got to think about it as a team, but we appreciate you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, thank thanks. Grishka did an impressive job showing the available market and the quality of Kubo. He had his pitch down and was very polished in the boardroom. However, I do think he could have dug a little deeper on the plan for addressing possible maintenance issues and the overall valuation of the company. Next, we have an interesting company who's looking to shake up the housing rental market. Hi guys, my name is Manu Bagachi. I'm the founder and CEO of House Day. So the light bulb moment for me was seeing our clients being price gouged and having to pay significant sums for renting an apartment. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way to do this. And that's what led to the birth of House Day. Well, the biggest challenge for us was being drowned out by the noise created by some of the other competitors and trying to differentiate ourselves from some of the other companies that pretend to be marketplaces but are not. 
Well, our goal at House Day is to democratize the rental process and bring costs down. So we would like folks to remember House Day as the go-to platform for any of their rental needs. Manu is bringing a fresh perspective and approach to property management with House Day. Long-term housing is a massive industry with lots of potential customers. But he'll need to show exactly how he's going to capture this market with other major companies lurking just around the corner. If Manu can clearly show the long-term vision for House Day, we'll see if that's enough to bring Thad on as an investor. Hey, welcome Hello, to UBS. Right. Thank you. How are you doing? Great. You ready for your pitch? Definitely Thanks. excited. Let's go into the bullpen. Sure. After you. Today's a big day, and I think you're ready for it. But before you go into the boardroom, there's a few things I want to go over. Sure. First, talk about the market. The market for housing options has become crowded with websites and apps. Show how your product will stand out from your competitors. Next, highlight the fees versus profit. How is your revenue structure broken down? This is important as other companies have received negative press for increasing fees. Also, feature success stories. What cities have you already seen great success? Fill everyone in on why those locations really work. Finally, what are your learning lessons? You've been around for a couple years now. What are the biggest lessons you've learned and how are you using those lessons to take house stay to the next level? All right, I think you're ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'll be out here when you get out. Absolutely, thank Good you. Good luck. So I'm excited to pitch to Thaddeus because he can relate to the problem we're solving. Players get traded all the time and are asked to find housing in a new city within a few days. Our system solves that problem and that unlocks tremendous synergies between different leagues and uh, the product we're offering. Hi, thank you so much for taking out the time to hear my pitch today. All right, no problem. We, we appreciate you coming. We're excited to have you here. We would like to hear you know, a little bit about your company and a little bit about your story as well. Awesome, so uh, my name is Manu Bagacci. I'm the founder and CEO of House Day, a marketplace to book fully furnished turnkey homes for a couple of months at a time. Think extended stays, right? So I started my career in the hospitality industry where I learned everything about the customers and customer service, which is kind of what allowed me to design a superior customer experience at House Day. Now Thaddeus, from what I understand, earlier this year, you were traded to the Toronto Raptors. Correct. Would you like to share a little bit about your relocation journey, specifically how you went about finding housing for your family? Uh, the trade experience is a little different. Uh, okay. Sometimes the, the team, they reach out to realtors or they might already have a situation for you or they move you into a hotel and stuff like that. So you get traded, you pack up your things and go, and you move on to the next city, and then you're in a hotel uh, right. with a 45-day stay, uh, free free on the team. Okay. Oh, wow, <laughs> or, that's great. Or, or you might go into an apartment situation. So Ronto Raptors had an apartment already ready, three-bedroom apartment in a, a pretty decent building. Um, Sounds like a little bit of friction there. Yeah, a little right? bit of friction. It could, it could um, certainly be improved upon. Because you don't really get to pick your experience. You don't right. really get to pick your, your stay. So right. not picking your stay, you know, you, you take what they give you. I would probably say predicated to your business, um, I got traded to San Antonio. Okay. And the rental market is completely different in San Antonio. Absolutely. It's a pretty crappy rental market. Yep. Um, hard to find a decent place to stay. Right. Um, houses are not up to par. They're not the newer houses and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, this is where a house day probably will come, come about. Right. And, and this is one of the reasons why we're sitting here listening to your pitch. And we appreciate your time because you're absolutely right. The supply is fragmented and it's offline. Right. And in 2022, there's absolutely no reason with the kind of technology we have out there for you or any of those 50 plus NBA players that were traded to have to go through that experience. So what if I told you there was a marketplace where you could actually find search and book housing in under an hour and know exactly the home you'd be occupying. Would that sound exciting? That would sound very exciting. That's exactly Especially what we're building. My wife. That's exactly what we're building at House Day. I think it's going great because Thaddeus is able to relate to our problem firsthand. I mean, how often do you get to see that? Uh, what we've built at House Day is basically a self-serve checkout process, which doesn't currently exist on any platform in North America. So tenants, think about it, tenants are able to go through a process which allows them to verify their identity, perform an entire credit, criminal, eviction, and background check, and then sign a pre-populated lease in less than an hour. Now, we launched our platform in 2019, 
And over the time, we've aggregated significant supply to service tenants. And the market, based on our research, is about $200 billion on a global basis. If House Day could capture about 10% of that market, we're talking about a $20 billion revenue opportunity. And what's super exciting for us is that market is in its infancy. So we're like one of the first people to get to discover the market, recognize it, and do something about it. Today, we have an inventory funnel of over a million listings. Since launch, we've processed about $3 million of gross booking value of leases signed. We're in 18 plus metros right now. And uh, we've done about $3 million of uh, revenue through the system. Our goal behind this current raise is to turbocharge the business expand our geographic presence, and just offer the service uh, across, across North America. How do we make money, right? Everyone wants to know. So the one other thing that we're trying to uh, establish by going to market is discover price transparency. Because right now, one of the things we've noticed uh, that a lot of athletes and pretty much anyone trying to rent a home has to undergo is significant price gouging simply because you're reaching out at the last minute. Uh, what we do is uh, we charge a 10% service fee, which is split evenly between the landlord and tenant, and is probably one of the most competitive fees because every other OTA out there has a 20 to 30% service fee, which makes renting a home for three months more expensive than anyone would like to kind of sort of pay. So at the time of the transaction, we also collect an extra 6.5%, which is based on the first month's rent, deposit, cleaning fees, and hour fees. At the face of it, the housing market might seem super crowded with all these apps and products out there, but there's no real marketplace that allows you to do what we've done. All of these guys, that's for that specific reason, are, have partnered with us and listed their inventory on our platform, because a lot of these folks operate as hotel companies that have amazing homes, but not a website that supports a booking process that we've built over the past two years. So we're currently raising $1.5 million to grow the business at a valuation of $6.5 million. We already have about a half a million dollars committed from uh, angel investors and current investors. We plan to use the capital to hire a few full-time employees to establish our marketing presence. And I obviously would love to have you as an investor since you've experienced that pain point yourself. And we recognize you know, the tangible and intangible value you would bring uh, to House State to get it to the next level. Coming up, Thaddeus and his team take a deep dive into House State's profitability. What has to happen for break even? All right, I like it. I like House Stay. Uh, I think you guys have something that's special. Um, obviously, nobody's doing exactly what you're doing. With these pitches, you know, comes questions. And one of the questions that you know, I have is um, when somebody's on the site and they're, or on the platform and they're looking at it. So when you actually do the whole process, do we have the ability to schedule an appointment, go see the actual property itself, or everything is just solely just online? So that's a great question. That's something where we've addressed by way of incorporating video tours as part of each listing. I like the product, but I'd like to understand how you differentiate yourself from some of the other short-term rental major competitor platforms. Sure. So if you think about the OTAs out there that includes Verbo, Airbnb, and Expedia, most of these platforms were architected and engineered around the holiday traveler. Mm -hmm. someone who's staying for a night or two nights. Mm -hmm. So not only do they not award the landlord and tenant the protections that we do, but they fall in the, in the realm of hospitality, whereas because we sign a lease, we fall in the realm of real estate. Mm -hmm. How do you keep up with supply and demand from an inventory standpoint? So right now we're at a place where we have more supply. Uh, that's because we got to drum up demand with this capital raise. So we haven't gotten into that problem. What is your marketing strategy? Where do you find those customers actually on both ends of the spectrum, both to add inventory and also to utilize the inventory? So on the supply side, because we're a very unique niche marketplace, uh, we don't really have to do any marketing. Uh, folks from the supply side reach out to us to onboard their listings. On the demand side, you to market to the B2C side and the B2B side. So on the B2C side, we go with Google AdWords, 
and some of those you know, traditional marketing tools available. On the B2B side, uh, once we get capitalized, we're gonna have one of our business, devel business development guy reach out to relocation managers, uh, human resource managers, and such housing coordinators to kind of sort of make them aware of this product. How many users uh, are currently actually uh, customers and using the platform? So we look at that data differently because you know you could have 20,000 users and zero paying users, right? That's not the case with us. Right. On an average, a transaction on house day is about seven to ten thousand dollars at booking. So we do currently we're doing about a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars in revenue a month, but that's simply a function of the limited marketing prowess we have. Right. Once we capitalize that, we have the ability to ramp that up within two months from a hundred grand to a million dollars a month. Gotcha. I think you mentioned you had a target goal to reach the Series A. Correct. What has to happen to win? Sure. To so make it to that next threshold. We've had numerous show. conversations with more later stage VCs who are growth stage VCs who've been tracking our progress because they mm -hmm. recognize what we've built. And the metric for that is to get to a million dollar run rate on an annual basis. What has to happen for break even? We is there a number we, of we users? Need, is there a dollar volume? I mean, I'm sure it's a mix, but sort of in your mind right now, today, what right. needs to happen to be successful to reach break even? Uh, what we need to do to break even is to establish an SEO presence, because then you're talking about a zero customer acquisition cost and just uh, you know positive LTV. Right now, we spend a little bit of money to acquire those questions. Yeah, and that's what I was, that was my next question, uh, customer acquisition cost. Sure, so uh, right now we're still discovering our CAC, but when all is said and done, we anticipate landing up at like around 100 or $150. Before we wrap this up, uh, usually as a team, we always ask one question. What keeps you up at night about the business? There's so much to do uh, in this business because as I said previously, this is, a space that's undefined, it's in its infancy, and we're still trying to figure out uh, how to make all of this work. So I would say the number of things that we could do, the initiatives that we could launch, and just the progress that we could potentially make with a little bit of capitalization is really what keeps me up. Uh, thank you, we appreciate you. Uh, we're definitely gonna you know, talk about it because you gave us a lot to think about, a lot to talk about, you know, thank you. Sure, and I'd like to thank you for your time and giving me this opportunity to come in and pitch. Yes, sir. Take care, have a good day. Mano did a great job of presenting House Day as an enticing product with a thorough business model. He came off as a true expert in the space. Although, I wish he would have talked more about defensibility and how House Day can persist for years to come. Overcoming pressures from massive companies in adjacent markets, let's see if Manu did enough to secure an investment from Thad. After the break, Thaddeus and his team huddled up to decide which company to invest in. What's stopping bigger competitors from doing the same exact thing that they're doing? With both pitches presented, it's time for Thaddeus and Tara to huddle up and discuss their options. In the meantime, Wale waits with the entrepreneurs as they are moments away from the big decision. All right, guys, I think you did an amazing job in there. While we wait for the decision, I'd like to go over a few things that may help you on your pitch next time. Kubo, let's start with you. Overall, I think you did an outstanding job articulating your business. However, I would love to hear more about your personal story and how your passion for food helped develop Kubo. Next, you mentioned how sports could play a big role in the success of your company. But I wish you would have gone a little deeper into how that could have happened, as well as how that is could help promote or endorse it. But I have to say, you did a great job showing both your passion and your knowledge and how the future of Kubo looks bright. So, what do you think about Kubo? What's your first gut? Uh, first gut, I like it, uh, but, you know, what's stopping somebody from, you know, coming in and doing something similar was just with different patents. Like, you know, they can shape shift all these different patents and make them do whatever they want to do, them, do to them. But, you know, um, I do like the fact that, you know, they can get real, real time analytical data from all their consumers, all the people who are using the different ones. I like the fact that it self cleans. Nobody likes to clean anything. Uh, but what I don't like is I don't like the noise. The noise level uh, is too loud. I do not want to wake up to that noise. The other thing is, you know, 
that 25X is uh, aggressive and it could potentially be there, but I need to see some numbers, their marketing strategy, and just an overall roadmap to make me a little bit more comfortable on um, having some confidence there. Then what do you think about the price point on the machine itself? Well, the free, you can't compete with free as long as the pods are good. Well, I'm talking about but, from the direct yes. to consumer side. Right, on the direct to consumer side, I think that's a little higher of a price point. I'm not familiar, but I'd like to do some research there because I think that, um, you know, maybe they might have to align with maybe an affirm or other type of um, payment method, but um, immediately an upfront of uh, 500 might be cost prohibitive for some families that would totally enjoy the drink. Another thing was like, like to be break even. Yes. Like they only have to sell 500. I really like that. That's why I really need to see those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about house stay. Great job jumping in and getting after it. I can tell they were excited to hear your pitch. Now you mentioned your business is in a crowded market, but I'm not sure you articulated just how big the 30-day rental market is. But you did an amazing job breaking down your business model and your target audience. Although, I would have loved to see you talk more about your personal story and how that inspired your vision for house stay. You also talked about the impact of your current marketing efforts, but you may have missed an opportunity to include sports teams and especially the value that is can bring. But you came very prepared and crushed all the curveballs thrown at you. You knew your business, numbers, and you came off polished. All right, second company, let's talk house stay. You know, they provided us a deck, and I really like the tagline that he pitched because it was a little more clarity. Fully furnished turnkey homes with self-serve checkout. Um, I, I think I, noticed that I think that's a that's a that's a better way to frame exactly what they're doing to help visualize, um, you know, their problem solve. Well, I mean, obviously this is more your background, but I do see some uh, problematic spaces. Uh, what's stopping bigger competitors from doing the same exact thing that they're doing? I mean, you have so many different competitors out here that's doing the same thing or doing something similar and close. What's stopping them from just simply taking their business model and then making it theirs? Yes, I definitely like to div dive a little deeper in on that competitive set to uh, make sure we better understand how he's really um, differentiating himself. And he, he didn't answer the question about like how many users they have. Obviously, like he gave me the different different differentiators, but um, I still want to know how many users, like who's like the repeat customer, and like exactly like how much they're spending at, at one time on the platform, and who's the how much how much time is the repeat customer coming back for? Now, one positive is that he was very passionate, and I really liked that he was thinking ahead, and so he had some targeted dates for his Series A. But on top of that, he really had discussions to understand what thresholds he needed to meet in order to achieve that. But I was really happy that he was uh, communicating that clearly. Other than that, I think we got a lot to, to choose from. I think we have to, you know, figure out which one is going gonna, is gonna to be a part of portfolio now. Which one will be game time? <laughs> yep. I'll text Wale and tell them, send them back in. All right, ready to move forward. Well, today was an important day for you, and it looked like both of you had a good time. Well, I'm done talking. It's decision time. Everyone's ready? Yes. Let's get in there. I'm right behind you. Got your text. Means you must have come to a decision. Yep, we surely have. Uh... Up next, Thaddeus shares his decision with Wale and the entrepreneurs. Uh, so, with that being said, we would definitely like to talk to you know one of you guys. And as of right now, we would like. It's time for Thaddeus to make his decision. Which company will he invest in? Both of you guys did a phenomenal job. Thank you. You both were great in what you what you presented to us. Definitely gave us a lot to talk about. Like, uh, so with that being said, we would definitely like to talk to you know one of you guys and, and have one of you guys come back in a little bit later. Um, as of right now, we would like Manu from House Stay to stay in, so we can have a conversation. Sure. Thank you. Yep. 
Hi, we just have a few additional questions just for clarity. We understand that you really have two customers. One is the landlord and the other is the tenant. And with somewhat of a crowded marketplace, we'd like to be a little more clear on exactly what is the differentiator and the competitive advantage to make the landlord or the tenant say, this is the company that I'd like to work with. The biggest difference between us and any of the other uh, operators out there is that on, for example, Zillow, you can schedule a showing, but you can't book a property. On a different platform, you could perform a background review, but then you can't see a property. On House Day, we've integrated the entire process and brought that transaction online, and that's what differentiates us and has been validated by our supply partners. What's stopping other companies from doing exactly what you're doing in, in that same form? Sure, so the barrier to entry in this market is really high. Think of listings like gold. We had to talk to these guys and prove our model and differentiate ourselves from the other OTAs out there, online travel agencies like Verbo and Airbnb, to be able to earn that inventory relationship, if that makes sense. Could you just clarify about the $3 million of, was it revenue or net revenue that you reached? Sure, so we as House Day, as I described, we earned revenue as a percentage of the leases we signed on a monthly or yearly basis. So the number I presented to you was the gross booking value of the leases we've signed over the past Okay, years. great, thanks for that. Thanks sure. for that. So, uh, in you know, speaking with Tara, um, we've decided that you know we just want to, right now, we want to follow your progress, see how you continue to like get better as far as growth and um, you know gaining traction with users and and uh, more listings and more people actually using the platform. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainties with you know the the stuff that you know that's going on in the the landscape of what you're doing. Uh, so you know we definitely want to you know stick with you and see exactly what your updates are and uh, continue to you know keep us abreast of everything that's going on and uh, continue to see how you guys are moving forward. Sure, thank you so much. I decided not to invest into house day at the moment for the simple fact of I didn't see them as a, uh, a big difference than what Sunders and Airbnbs and all those companies are doing right now. You know, I think they, they all can do the same thing, but I do think they, they can gain traction. I think they can do something special. Uh, it's just, you know, for me, I have to see that a little bit further down the line. All right, Wale, that was a good one. You know, why don't you bring Kibo back in so we can talk to them? Yep. My guy G, what's up? Hey, bro. Welcome back. <laughs> So we've uh, we've been in here talking. Uh, both companies were great. Um, we liked yours, obviously. Um, we we know you said 500k uh, for four percent of the company at a 12.5 pre, and I think we were thinking more in the range of uh, 250k uh, for five percent, barring due diligence, and uh, with advisory stock as well. How you feel about that? I think it's a little low for us. A few years ago, we, I'm sure we would have accepted, um, but now we're six years down the road, so it would be a little low, I think, for us to accept. We think, um, you, you know, you, you shared with us that you were modeling to be the Keurig, and the way that we've seen them be so successful in scale was really some of that D2C model. And we think that there may be some work to do with reducing that price point. You know, we thought through that and, you know, where you are in terms of um, actually units out the door because you said break even is uh, 500 machines sold and, you know, you're not quite there yet. So we still see you as an earlier stage company in why we were coming to the determination of this uh, valuation, uh, actually, dollar investment offer. We're kind of a hybrid. That, that's what's specific and weird about Kubo in a way. We are just starting to deploy and seeing all that traction. But, you're, and we have, but we have the six years of research and development in the back. But I mean, from like 4% for 
we could go, I think, to 5% for the same amount, like for $500,000. I think that's what we could do, if that makes you guys more at ease. What do you think? What do you think? So um, what we're thinking is uh, we would be interested in proceeding with a potential 500K at the 5% offer subject to further review of the financials and um, also the consideration of, you know, a potential advisory stock. We have a healthy portfolio and we see several existing portfolio companies that would be in alignment and would help potentially scale and or place um, within those potential businesses. Perfect. I mean, we definitely need that as well, and we're very open to that, so all right, all thank right. you. Well, we're going to say this, uh, GSD. We're getting it done. We're ready yes, to move congratulations. forward. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Well, we're very happy to have you on board, Thaddeus, and more than the money, I think the exposure we can get from you is amazing. Well, I think it's a great partnership because you see how Thaddeus and his team works and seeing how dedicated you are to uh, your business it's a perfect partnership. All right, man. Let's get going. Thanks. Thaddeus ultimately decided on investing in Kubo. With this deal, he adds a very interesting up-and-coming company to his portfolio with the opportunity for big returns. We'll see you next time on Front Office. Presented by UBS on Players TV.